Good morning. It is Thursday, the 5th of October, 2023, uh, Thursday in the week of Trinity 17. Uh, we're here at the Rectory of St. John's Church in Savannah for morning prayer, according to the 1928 prayer book, bolstered by 1662. And that means we're here to render thanks to God for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. But first, as scripture teaches us in sundry places, let us acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. <coughs> Excuse me. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord, and grant, a most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life. To the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all those who truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long as I grieved this generation and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Vanity tells us every day what worship is. We are to rejoicing in the rock, the strength of our salvation, the rock, literally the rock of our salvation. Rejoicing in the absolute security of our salvation, uh, because it is a salvation worked by the Creator Himself in His infinite power who in his sheer grace and mercy has taken us as his own. 
And uh, in the gratitude of faith, let us give our full attention to his voice as it resounds in his word, that we may know his will, do his works, walk in his ways, and enter into his promised rest. That is indeed the work of worship. Today, uh, on the fifth day of the month at morning prayer, the Psalms are 24, 25, 26. They begin in the 1928 prayer book on page 368. And Psalms 24 and 26 both uh, speak about the importance of moral integrity in, in the, char the character, moral integrity, uh, which belongs to those who are admitted uh, by co into communion uh, with the Lord not as the basis of that communion, but as a condition of its being entered into, uh, or being received. Uh, and Psalm 25 in between uh, rejoices in the, um, it's kind of a primer in prayer. So uh, 24 and 26 have to do with what's, what's required of us. Psalm 25 in between them uh, explains how we are to obtain those graces uh, from God himself in prayer. These are things to be asked for, uh, which he has promised in his covenant. The earth is the Lord's. Uh, 24, uh, you'll see, has some echoes that are picked up, both in Advent and Ascension, Christ's coming to us, his going to the Father. The earth is the Lord's, and all that therein is, the compass of the world, and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas, and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall rise up in his holy place? Even he that hath clean hands and a pure heart, and that hath not lift up his mind unto vanity, false gods, nor sworn to deceive his neighbor. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord, and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, even of them that seek thy face, O God of Jacob." Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? It is the Lord strong and mighty, even the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? Even the Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Psalm 25, as I say, a kind of primer in prayer, uh, speaks of prayer as the exercise, indeed, of confident hope in God, um, and it gives praise to God uh, for his, um, uh, the, the, his goodness uh, and mercies uh, manifested to his covenant people. So first, uh, a word of prayer. Unto thee, will I, O Lord, will I lift up my soul. There's the classic definition of prayers, the lifting up of the heart and mind to God. Unto thee, O Lord, will I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in thee. O let me not be confounded, neither let mine enemies triumph over me. For all they that hope in thee shall not be ashamed. But such as transgress without a cause shall be put to confusion. So the prayer is indeed hope in God. It's the exercise of hope in God. Show me thy ways, O Lord, and teach me thy paths. Lead me forth in thy truth and learn me, for thou art the God of my salvation, and thee hath been my hope all the day long. So um, hope and then a willingness to be instructed and formed and commanded. Call to remembrance, O Lord, thy loving mercies, thy tender mercies, and thy loving kindnesses which have been ever of old. O remember not the sins and offenses of my youth, but according to thy mercy, think thou upon me, O Lord, for thy goodness. So not only instruction in the, in the right way, but forgiveness for uh, how we've erred and strayed from it. And now, praise of God's gracious mercy. Gracious and righteous is the Lord. Therefore will he teach sinners in the way, just as we've asked. Them that are meek shall he guide in judgment, and such as are gentle, them shall he learn his way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth, unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. For thy name's sake, O Lord, be merciful unto my sin, for it is great. What man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. His soul shall dwell at ease, and his seed shall inherit the land. The secret of the Lord is among them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant.
So there's a sort of confident trust in, in the fellowship that God graciously vouchsafes to us. And now we turn back to prayer. Prayer especially for deliverance. Mine eyes are ever looking unto the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. Turn thee unto me and have mercy upon me, for I am desolate and in mercy, misery. The sorrows of my heart are enlarged, O bring thou me out of my troubles. Look upon my adversity and misery, and forgive me all my sin. Consider mine enemies, how many they are, and they bear tyrannous hate against me. O keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be confounded, if I put my trust in thee. Let perfectness and righteous dealing wait upon me, for my hope hath been in thee. And now in the last verse, he moves from the individual to the community, from uh, the psalmist to the church. Deliver Israel, O God, out of all his troubles. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And Psalm 26, once again, speaks of the integrity, innocence required of those admitted by grace into God, communion with God. Be thou my judge, O Lord, for I have walked innocently. My trust hath been also in the Lord, therefore shall I not fall. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try out my reins and my heart, the reins of the kidneys, the seat of the emotions. For thy loving kindness is ever before mine eyes, and I will walk in thy truth. I have not dwelt with vain persons, neither will I have fellowship with the deceitful. I have hated the congregation of the wicked, and will not sit among the ungodly. I will wash my hands in innocency, O Lord, and so will I go to thine altar, that I may show the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all thy wondrous works. So you see that all this innocency, this integrity is not the basis of, of entrance into heaven. It's response to the grace for which we give thanks, by which we've been called to it. Lord, I have loved the habitation of thy house and the place where thine honor dwelleth. O oh, shut not up my soul with the sinners, nor my life with the bloodthirsty. In his hands is wickedness, and the right hand is full of gifts, bribes. But as for me, I will walk innocently. O oh, deliver me, and be merciful unto me. My foot standeth right. I will praise the Lord in the congregations. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Reminded of the Lord's saying to his servant, Be innocent as doves. Here we get at the seventh chapter of the book of Job, and we're well into the great poetic exchanges between Job and his three uh, so-called comforters, whose comfort is in fact um, uh, questionable. Uh, at chapter 7, we have a passage from one of Job's answers to them, uh, and certainly a lament. Is there not an appointed time to man upon earth? Are not his days also like the days of an hireling? As a servant earnestly desireth the shadow, and as an hireling looketh for the reward of his work, so am I made to possess months of vanity, and wearisome nights are appointed to me. When I lie down, I say, when shall I rise and the night be gone? And I am full of tossings to and fro unto the dawning of the day. My flesh is clothed with worms and clods of dust, my skin is broken and become loathsome. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle and are spent without hope. Oh, remember that my life is wind. Mine eye shall no more see good. The eye of him that hath seen me shall see me no more. Thine eyes are upon me, and I am not. As the cloud is consumed and banisheth away, so he that goeth down to the grave shall come up no more. He shall return no more to his house, neither shall his place know him any more. Therefore I will not refrain my mouth. I will speak in the anguish of my spirit. I will complain in the bitterness of my soul. Am I a sea or a whale that thou settest a watch over me? When I say my bed shall comfort me, my couch shall ease my complaint, then thou scarest me with dreams and terrifiest me with visions so that my life chooseth strangling and death rather than life. I loathe it. I would not live alway. Let me alone, for my days are vanity, they're wind. 
What is man that thou shouldst magnify him, and that thou shouldst set thine heart upon him, and that thou shouldst visit him every morning, and try him every moment? How long wilt thou not depart from me, nor let me alone till I swallow down my spittle? I have sinned. What shall I do unto thee, O thou preserver of men? Why hast thou set me as a mark against thee, so that I am a burden to myself? And why dost thou not pardon my transgression, and take away mine iniquity? For now shall I sleep in the dust, and thou shalt seek me in the morning, and I shall not be. A noble, eloquent lament on the shortness and uncertainty of human life, um, its ultimate insignificance, um, uh, considered in the in, in in the perspective of this worldly life alone. Blessed art thou, O Lord God of our fathers, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou for the name of thy majesty, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou, the glorious throne of thy kingdom, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou in the firmament of heaven, praised and exalted above all forever. Let us bless the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Praise him and magnify him forever. Amen. Here beginneth the second chapter of the epistle of Paul the Apostle to the Ephesians. After a magnificent first chapter, we have a magnificent second chapter. Ephesians really is a remarkably marvelous summary of all Paul's teaching. And here he talks about the effect of the gospel, which is the, of course, the expression of God's eternal purpose and Christ's redeeming work and the work of the Spirit in our hearts on the Gentiles of Ephesus, these outsiders, non-Jewish people who have received the gospel. And you hath he quickened, that is, made to live, you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in, where in, in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, of course, Satan, among whom also we had all our conversation, manner of life, in times past, in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast." For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained, that we should walk in them. Here endeth the uh, second lesson. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham that he would give us, that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest. For thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Excuse me, little morning sniffle. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. In the faith of Jesus Christ, let us claim the gracious promises of the gospel for ourselves, for each other, for those we love, uh, for all sorts and conditions of men, both near and far throughout the world, that God's ways may be known unto them in the gospel, his saving health among all nations, for Christ's holy Catholic Church, for its unity in the truth of the gospel and in brotherly love, and for the clergy and people of the churches of Christ among all nations, and here in Savannah, and especially at St. John's, for the faithfulness of their witness and worship. For our country and all countries of the world, for their peace, order, and good government, and the deliverance of the peoples of the world of misery, strife, and oppression, especially today, think of the people of Ukraine um, uh, in their um, courageous uh, fight um, against an unjust, um, uh, aggressive belligerence for um, all those who suffer in mind, body, or estate, that the Lord would comfort and relieve them according to their several necessities, uh, giving them patience under their sufferings and a happy issue from all their afflictions. I bid your prayers, especially for those who are hospitalized in nursing or hospice care, for those undergoing or recovering from surgery, those suffering critical illness, debilitating infirmity, chronic pain, cognitive impairment, those dealing with anxiety, depression, or mental illness, those facing the challenge of sobriety. For those who are traveling, for those who are uh, work in dangerous occupations, for uh, all women in childbirth. For the very young and the very old, for widows, widowers, and orphans, for the abandoned and the abused, the hungry and the homeless, for refugees, prisoners, and captives, especially Evan and Jimmy. For those who are grieving, and for those who are dying, and for those who have departed this life in Christ and are rest in him, that with them in our time, we too may rest in peace and rise in glory. And this day that being safe under the protection of the divine mercy, um, we may serve and please the Lord in all that is given us both to do and to suffer, not with eye service as men pleasers, as Paul puts it, but with singleness of heart, fearing God, as the servants of Christ. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the state, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And do thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, for it is thou, Lord, only that makest us to dwell in safety. O God, make clean our hearts within us and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. We pray for God's prevenient grace, the grace that goes before us, leads the way, and enables and instigates our response. Lord, we pray thee that thy grace may always prevent and follow us, and make us continually to be given to all good works. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost ever, one God, world without end. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, 
in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom. Defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by thy governance, may be righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. From this Sunday's epistle, I beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with, long, with all meekness, lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Word endeavor there means make it your duty. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. The good Lord order this day and your doings in his peace and grant you your prayers as may be most expedient for you according to his good and perfect will.